Hello everyone and welcome finally to the Fire and Ice Awards. Dude, Dang, dude. I have been waiting so long for so. this very moment, as if this was my first take. <laughs> as if, <laughs> yes. as if, as if. No, no, I am very, very excited. This is, yeah. is going to be probably the most epic video of the year, right? Dude, it has to be. It's got to be. For right? sure. Yeah, totally. So what are we doing here, dude? So what we are going to be doing here is we are going to be showing off the best games of 2022. Yes. Games that we literally cannot stop playing, games that I cannot stop thinking about nonstop. But yeah. I also want to mention this beautiful table that made it possible here today. I want to give a huge, huge thank you to Rathskellers for giving us this amazing table to film on these epic freaking games. So, so nice. Wild, <laughs> wild venue. <laughs> so, so exciting. I know. But you know what we're missing? What are we missing, Tim? I feel like we're missing some people here. Right, right, right. Friends. 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 Exactly. Content creators. Two specific ones mm -hmm. that have amazing chemistry. Yes. That Canadian. Canadian. Yes. 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 Ones that, you know, that just bring so much more life to right. the video. Right, you know right, I mean? right, right. You know Way about? more life than we bring. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> exactly, dude. Way better than us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Exactly. <laughs> Introducing oh. Foster, Foster the Game. Game. What are you oh, doing? Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, we just yeah. happened to be here. Wow, that yeah, is in incredible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we were just randomly in the neighborhood. Dude, <laughs> would not, we wouldn't have got to do this video without you. Yeah, fair enough. Oh. Yeah, that's true. 100%. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. You got it. So, this is Jeff and Jamie from Foster the Maple. They are a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Exactly. That's okay. right. And you know what's interesting? We actually picked up another Canadian along the way. I, I hope that's oh, okay. Oh, today. Yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. Just oh, here, as yeah. we were she's, walking. She's here right now. Oh, no way. Yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah. I feel like. Do we know? Door. Yeah, we do. We do. Oh, you we definitely. Do. Yeah, you've heard oh, yeah. her. Sure. Yeah. Shut up! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No way. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I, I am Jenna. I'm from the Board Game Garden. I consider myself a little bit of a newbie around all these <laughs> hey. people. Come on. No. No. Yeah. I, 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 no. That doesn't, that doesn't fly. No. Absolutely perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. I did happen to see some people that are kind of opposite of me. They are some veterans. Oh, oh veterans of the board game. Veterans of the board game. That's a space. big title. Yeah. Big, big title. Yeah. yeah. I wonder. Hmm. Who that is? Oh, of yeah. course. Yep. There we go. Yes. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? Well, we run a YouTube channel called Before You Play. I'm Naveen. This is my wife, Monique. Hi. Uh, we primarily focus on playthroughs, which can be kind of long. That's right. Um, so we know some people that can make some short form content. Yeah, really oh. great one minute overviews. One right. minute overviews. That's right. I think it's Raina and Phil. That's right, Raina and Phil. Four games. What's up, everyone? I am Raina. <laughs> and I'm Phil. And we are One Minute Board Games. We focus on concise tabletop content on TikTok. And we are super excited to be here. I know. It's like so hype. But <laughs> like, so hype. So hype. hype. <laughs> um, but do you know who else brings hype? Who? It's so nice to see all of you on YouTube and TikTok. Uh, I'm on Twitch, and there's a couple people who have been really influential and encouraging uh, to help me out on that platform, and they happen to be here today. Hang on, hang on. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm Mike Murphy. We are the Brothers Murphy. We run a YouTube and Twitch channel. We do all sorts of board game challenges and playthrough videos, all with an emphasis on fun and entertainment. Absolutely. Now, there's no one really else to introduce. We're going to kick it back to Sam and Tim. Yeah. Dude, I am so excited to have everybody here. Everyone's super stoked to see all your favorite picks, so I say we get some. Let's do it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sam from Lord of the Board, and today we are going to be going into uh, the 18th century. We are gonna be taking on Ambitious Families. This game comes from the acclaimed designer of Root, Oath, 
PAX Premier. This is John Company, second edition. You're gonna be running a, a family, essentially. And one of the cool things about the game is that it is an economic game where instead of players running their own individual company, you're all gonna be working together a little bit and running John Company. Um, and so this game does have a, a theme that is a little bit hard to kind of grok. It is, you know, you are playing terrible people and running a terrible company. We are gonna be running uh, operations in the East India British Trading Company. So for example, a player might have the presidency of Bombay and uh, they're gonna be making trade in certain parts of India here on the map. What's really nice about the game is that even though it is so big and so daunting, it actually runs really, really smoothly because as you can see, there's different positions on the board here. And this token, this pawn is actually just gonna be moving around and then it's just gonna go around to each different office within the company. And then every player is gonna basically be doing their actions that way. And one of the things that's going to happen in the game is that it, the company, you know, the insidious company is either going to fail completely or it is going to run and succeed and the retirements of your family members will essentially bring you victory. In this game, money at the end of the day really doesn't matter. It's all about wealth and status. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your family members in these different positions of the company and then actually get them to retire. And one of the things that I love about it so much is that the retirement is completely random in a way. So you're gonna be rolling a dice at the end of an entire game turn for each of your people in office. And on the rule of a five or a six, they're gonna retire, and then you can actually get them one of these estates. Everything in John Company, from the rewards that you can get from the estates, it all has a downside. This game really shows how dysfunctional yet influential this company really was. And by the end of the game, it really does bring about a lot of good discussion about what was going on and how it went on. But one thing that I would highly recommend is that before ever even playing this game, you talk to the people around the table and make sure that they are comfortable kind of entering in on this experiment. Now, one of the reasons why this game was game of the year for me is if you look at it, it is absolutely gorgeous. From these screen printed meeples, uh, these are just absolutely incredible. Um, every single one of them is unique and different and shows different artwork on each of the family tokens. All the card quality, obviously, it's just absolutely amazing. I think the biggest reason why this game is going to make uh, become the game of the year of 2022 is that it is literally unlike any experience I have ever experienced. Having the feeling of ownership where you might be, you know, the, the director of trade or the manager of shipping, where players are gonna be having their own ship that they purchased, yet they can't actually get it to the sea. The determining factor of who gets it to the sea is the player as the manager of shipping. They choose to put the company's money in to put your personal family's ship out to the sea to trade. Those kinds of decisions and interactions are some of the coolest in the game. The amount of negotiation of trying to convince the, the manager of shipping, for example, hey, put my ship on to sea because I have a lot more money where I can actually move things around a little bit easier on this side of India here. And this, those kinds of conversations are just absolutely mind blowing. Everybody's negotiating, everybody's yelling at each other. We're all trying to make this dysfunctional company work. And it's kind of cool as well because some players can literally play against the company the whole time. They want the company to crash they might start building workshops uh, because these workshops actually give you victory points if the company fails. And so now everybody at the table is looking at that one player who's buying a lot of workshops. They are <laughs> essentially uh, putting a claim that the company is going to fail. And I want to present this Game of the Year award to Cole Worley and Worley Good Games because this game is just absolutely incredible. I absolutely love the work you do, Cole, and I think that it is more and more deserving of this uh, than, than any other game I've played. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. So cheers to you guys. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm Jeff. I'm Foster the Meeple, and we are really excited to show you our favorite game of 2022. Mm -hmm. It's essentially like a Disney movie in a board game, in a box, campaign game. Yep. 
it's a perfect amalgamation, I think, of the things that we enjoy, which is I prefer campaign, big box, story-driven games. Mm -hmm. And Jamie loves cute animals, princesses, that sort of thing. It's so, freaking adorable. Yeah, and yeah. it's played over a series of eras that continue to, I guess, progress the story. And that game is Familiar Tales from Plaid Hat Games, designed by Jerry Hawthorne. Who we actually got to play this game with at PAXU. So really cool story there that we'll never forget. So in Familiar Tales, you are playing as a wizard's familiars and you are actually rescuing and protecting a little baby princess. And not only are you rescuing and protecting her, you are carrying her throughout her life as she grows up and you're going on different adventures and just trying to get her back to the castle um, once the kingdom is safe mm -hmm. again. And the yeah. decisions you make as a familiar will dictate how the princess kind of grows up and how she yeah. rules and all of these things. Exactly. It's an so ever evolving story. Her personality will change depending on your decisions. Mm -hmm. So this is our favorite game of 2022 for many, many reasons. But number one for me, it's freaking adorable. I, don't, mm -hmm. I mean, you can see it's very, very cute. I love the theme. It is a very welcoming campaign games and campaigns happen to be yeah. your favorite yeah. type of game. A as mentioned, it's a perfect combination of the things I think we both enjoy. Mm -hmm. I really love campaign story driven narrative and the story in this game is just incredible mm -hmm. and it really combines that thing that Jamie loves which is like cute animals and yeah. and almost like Disney in a box basically. Exactly and like Jeff mentioned we got to play this game with the designer at PAX Unplugged so it was mm -hmm. a very special moment and he actually gifted us with our copy so it has a little bit more of an emotional I guess connection for us Yeah. but I love everything about it. It has deck building, it has adventure, it has a lot of variation and there's a lot of things you need to think about because you're not just an adventurer you also need to take care of a baby so you yeah. know life's not just about you yeah there's <laughs> there's constant kind of discontent and things that can come up where you know the the princess might need attention and you might have to stop what you're doing in order to pay attention to her to make sure she's comfortable and all of these things so the decisions are constantly changing, it's an ever-evolving narrative, yeah. and it just combines a lot of the things that we love in games. So we would like to present our favorite game of 2022, this beautiful, not heavy at all award, to Familiar Tales from Plaid Hat Games. Absolutely. Yay. <laughs> Hi friends, it is Jenna. I am from the Board Game Garden and the game that I'm going to be talking about today is Cozy, a town lit by candles, traveling, traveling with others. It is published by Elf Creek Games, designed by Brian Sewer, and that game is Merchants of the Dark Road. So in Merchants of the Dark Road, you are going to be a merchant, obviously by the title, and you are going to be traveling around a town that is a rondelle, and you are going to have your own cart, which honestly is one of my favorite parts of this game. Um, and I do want to mention that this is actually a deluxe version of it, which we only have the retail. And that says a lot because I still like it a lot. <laughs> Um, but in Merchants of the Dark Road, you will be taking your die, moving them forward in order to move a certain amount of time around the rondelle. You are going to be going to different places. You're going to be buying goods, selling goods to heroes, um, picking up those heroes. You're going to be accepting Queen's commissions, which then, once you do all those things, you can go traveling, which again, one of my favorite things and you are actually going to be able to go with other people, other players off to different towns in order to drop off those Queen's Commissions, drop off those heroes in order to make money as well as prestige. And you are actually trying to balance the two. So you are trying to balance your money, you're trying to balance your prestige and whatever one is lower is actually going to be your final score give or take because there's also objective cards, which are deeds in the game. And I think that is pretty much the overview 
of the game. Um, some of my favorite things, one is obviously the components. Elf Creek Games make some fantastic games. Another reason why I love this game is just the mix of different mechanisms. There's a lot of mechanisms in this game that you don't often see in other games. Um, the kind of picking up other players and then bringing them to other towns, having that option to go with other players is just something I've never seen in a game before. You also have the companions, which absolutely amazing. I love all of the cute critters. This is another mechanism in the game that is really unique because you are collecting these gems here that you actually put on to the critters in order to gain different abilities. So I would like to award Merchants of the Dark Road my favorite game of 2022. This is an amazing, amazing production. This game just takes you on a journey of collecting goods, selling goods, traveling, and it's just my favorite game of 2022. So this game technically came out in 2021, but it was new to us in 2022, and that's why it's on our list today. This game is about building and maintaining a zoo, as well as participating in conservation efforts. And this game is called Arc Nova. It's designed by Matthias Vige and published by Capstone Games here in the US. And so the way that the game works is each player has a hand of five different action cards. And these action cards are going to dictate what you get to do in the game. You have a card that lets you draw additional cards. And the cards are gonna be primarily made up of animals that you're gonna to try to be putting into your zoo. You also have conservation cards that you can score for at the end of the game. Uh, you have an additional action card that lets you build enclosures onto your zoo map. And this is all done on your own player board. You have a card that lets you put the animals into play as soon as you already have an enclosure. And then you have additional cards that allow you to take association actions, which are all done on this board over here, which can score you a lot of points, as well as putting additional sponsor cards into play, which can help you gain some money. Over the course of the game, you're going to be trying to score two different types of points. You have appeal points, which is shown by these tickets, and then you also have conservation points under these kind of green tabs here. The end of the game is going to be triggered when one player meets their pawns or exceeds them. And at that point, whoever has the biggest difference between the two pawns is going to be the winner. Which means you can score negative points. That's right. And that's actually one of the reasons why I like this game. That's right, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a, essentially a big race. Uh, you're trying to do the exact same types of things as your opponents, but you're just trying to do everything a little bit better than them. Right. In addition to that, the theme is awesome. It's all about animals. All of the cards show different types of animals that you can find at a zoo. And at the end of the day, you're trying to participate in conserving these species. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my favorite part of the game personally is the way you can take different actions. Uh, being able to manipulate the cards and take ideal actions at the in-ideal time to get other actions set up and ready to go for the most ideal action uh, is my absolute favorite part of this game. Right, because one of the things that we didn't mention is the longer you wait to take a specific action on a card, the stronger it gets, because that is the whole purpose of these numbers on your player board. Mm -hmm. If I were to take a sponsor card at the number five spot, it's gonna be just so much stronger than had it been at the one spot. Right. So managing those cards and allowing it to help build up over time is one of the really, really fun parts about it. Mm -hmm. And so we wanna present this award for our favorite game of the year for Arc Nova because of its sweet action selection mechanism and that feel of a race element in an animal theme. All right, so our game of 2022 is this awesome logic deduction puzzle. You feel super clever when you're playing it. Each puzzle plays in about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast you solve it or don't solve it. Yeah, and just the way it works, like I don't even know how this game was made, but it's incredible. It's incredibly impressive. Yep. And that game is Turing Machine, designed by Fabian Gradel and Yuan Levet, published by Scorpion Mass Games. Turing Machine is designed by Fabian Gradel and Yohan Levet, published by Scorpion Mass Games, and is an awesome deduction game. Um, it is named after Alan Turing, who made a lot of contributions to the modern day computer. Turing Machine is a one to four player game where you are trying to find the correct three digit 
code uh, that fits all the verifiers. So a code is three digits and they are numbered one to five. And you also have all of these verifiers, which will tell you more information on how to get the correct code. All right, so each round, you will pick a three digit uh, code and try to test it against these verifiers. And the verifier is going to tell you whether it's true or false. Like this one right here, um, it is trying to explain if the blue is even or odd. And if you get it incorrect, then it will give you an X. The first person to get the correct code for the puzzle wins the game. But if both players or multiple players guess the correct code in the same round, then the player who used the fewest verifiers wins. So we want to present this award, this beautiful, heavy award, to Turing Machine. Um, I really fell in love with this game this year. I love how, you know, the original game comes with 20 puzzles, but there are literally millions, millions online, which is such a crazy design that these people went ahead and put together. And also, they actually have a daily puzzle, so I mm -hmm. love that because wake up in the morning, you know, drink your coffee, feed your cat, because mine's yelling at me all the time. And then I sit down and I do my puzzle. It's like a way better wordle. Yeah, it just really helps stimulate your brain, gets those puzzle, think logic puzzles. Yeah. Working. I feel like I really love a game where I can feel clever while playing it, to be completely mm -hmm. honest, and there's like no better rush than like knowing that you have the correct three-digit yep. code. And you're like, I'm going to beat all these guys at the table here. So thank you so much, Scorpion Mass Games and Fabian Rivdell and Yohan Levet for making an amazing game, our 2022 Game of the Year. This game is a two-player wonderful game that includes some really cool characters, including Black Widow, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Scarlet Witch, and Thor. The game is Marvel Dice Throne. Marvel Dice Throne by Nate Chatelier, Manny Tremblay, and Gavin Brown, published by The Op and Roxley Games. You each start out with 50 health and a few CP points. Your goal is to knock your opponent's health down to zero. You can do that in multiple ways, but the main way you're gonna do that is by rolling dice three times. So for example, the first action I'm gonna do is figure out if I wanna play a card. There's different ways and times you can play your cards. Some are immediate actions, some are during the roll phase, and some are just to build up your board so that your actions are more powerful. Once you play your cards, or you can skip if you want, you're gonna start rolling and you see what you have. So here I have different symbols. I will, I have all one symbol with different numbers. I can look at my board here and say, okay, on my first roll, I drew or I rolled Flips. I rolled five of them, I could deal six damage. However, if I'm going for, let's say, the ultimate, then that would be this symbol right here. I don't have any cards to manipulate my dice, so I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna try to go for a run instead. Maybe I can get a four and a five. So I have two more rolls. I got a four, and I have one more roll. I got a five. So there I have a run and a large straight, and I can draw one card into my hand, I deal eight damage, and then I inflict webbed. Webbed is a negative status effect against the other player. So I can place this token on the Black Widow. You keep on doing that until the first person reaches zero, the other person would win. I like Marvel Dice Throne because it uses each character's powers and skill sets to create unique gameplay against your opponent. Combat games are new to me, and being able to relate it to a game I grew up playing makes it familiar and relatable to pick up and teach others. Whenever I play this game with people, they immediately catch on, and I love seeing the different tactics and strategies they use. I rarely like themed IP games, but this one remains true to its original game, Dice Throne, and then adds its own flavor, so a player can enjoy being Thor, Black Widow, or some other character they love. The game never feels like it drags on, doesn't interfere a lot with your opponent, and each character fits in a travel-sized container that you can take on the go. I've often grabbed two characters and played at a restaurant while having drinks or waiting for my food. They fit in my lounge fly backpack too, which is a plus. I play a lot of heavy Euro strategic board games, but this one made my list this year because it's a palate cleanser for when I just want to chuck some dice and duke it out while drinking a cold cider next to the live band at the market down the street. People walk by, recognize a Marvel character, and are intrigued. I would like to present this award to Marvel Dice Throne.
Now this might be the smartest game I have ever seen. This game actually has a built-in computer that is so smart, you don't even have to plug it in at all. It uses analog technology to make a computer to then use deduction. This game is from Scorpion Mask and produced by Fabian Levitt and Johan Gridel, and this is Turing Machine. That's right, so this game is all about deducing a three number code. It sounds simple enough, but the whole thing is that you have this analog computer that you have to use. You're basically gonna be given rules that the code must follow. Now you're not gonna get specifics like it's going to be this number, but you can say the blue number or the first number, is it greater than four or is it less than four? And you're going to assemble codes and actually test out the various verifiers in the game. And it's gonna tell you definitively, yes, this blue is greater than four. That doesn't give me all the information I need, but it tells me that it's not one, two, or three. By using the various different verifiers here, you can ultimately find through process of elimination only one possible code for each of the different puzzles. And there are literally millions of puzzles that you can put together. And the fact that they can have a punch board computer that uses ancient technology you can assemble a 135, for example, given one window. And the fact that you can use something like this that actually works, I literally don't know how that happens. My brain can't begin to process that if you make a random card with a bunch of holes, stack those together, you're gonna be able to make a computer. That's even wilder to me than like actual computers. And because of that, the fact that you can go through and use whatever little brain power I possess to find a code that actually works is incredible. It's something that is so satisfying for me to play because you have that moment of discovery. Ooh, I now know something about the yellow number. And based on the yellow number, I now have inf information about the blue and the purple number. And every time when you go to that final check, you think you have it right, and you finally check the puzzle and you get that, yes, you beat the machine, you have the right puzzle. I feel like maybe actually Alan Turing. Maybe I won't say actually Alan Turing, but I feel like I think I can break codes. I think I might be a genius. And any game that gives me that level of satisfaction is gonna be one that I wanna come back to. So I play this every single day. I like to check on the new puzzle. How quick can I get it? How efficient? How many leaps of logic can I put my brain through? And then there's also the fun toy factor of just stacking up cards and whatever code you choose, you'll produce one little window right here that's going to be the key to your answers. That right there is infinite exploration, infinite satisfaction, and that why that's why this game is, for me, very hard to beat. There's nothing better this year than Turing Machine. So for making the most clever game that I have ever seen, I'm awarding Scorpion Mask my game of the year for Turing Machine. For making something that is so infinitely clever and also makes me feel clever within it, this is an easy pick for me. Scorpion Mask, congratulations. Turing Machine is truly a triumph. I don't know how you did it. Please make more games like this because I am blown away. Even the box itself has a puzzle built right in. Congrats. Your robot's staging an uprising, but it's not the kind of uprising you might think. This one isn't an uprising about violence and trying to kill your human overlords. This one's about stealth, slinking around these different corporations and trying to get out without being detected. This is Burn Cycle. So this is a cooperative game where you are going around three different corporations and each corporation will have eight different scenarios that you can play in this game. And like I said, you are robots staging an uprising, but your human overlords have really suppressed you and repressed you down. You can't just show up guns a blazing. That's not how it works. So in this case, we have one of the corporation floors set up and you're going to be moving your robots around, but there's big humans in mechs all over the place and you have to complete your objectives, hopefully without being seen or caught. If one of the robots here detects you, you will have to put out one of your um, detection markers to say, ooh, they have seen you. You have to run away as they go and investigate. And I said, every single corporation has multiple different scenarios that you're going to do. They have different objectives. You might have to break into this room, steal a couple of these things, go over here and break out kind of like, you know, diehard style. You're coming out the window, jumping out, you know, to a big 
big superhero landing and stuff. And so it's really, really cool because again, it's all about stealth. It's not about fighting. You can technically attack things in the game, but you usually don't want to because you're probably going to lose. And every person will have their own robot. Every robot will have special abilities that they're gonna do. And then throughout the game, you can spend the power of your robot to upgrade your different abilities. But there's also a really cool thing called the command module, which is over here. And this command module is kind of a robot that everyone will jointly control. So there's usually always two to three robots out there, one that you always control together. And there's all these different parts of the game. It's a big modular game where every single scenario will be doing different stuff. The maps will be set up in a different way. You have the big ping network right here where the CEO is in there like all wired up Cerebro style. And they're just looking for the robots, trying to ping them and trying to track them down. And there's just so much going on. There's so many things to do and kind of go into. It's too much for a quick overview like that, but why do I like it? Why do I like Burn Cycle? Honestly, I don't really know. I just really, really do. These kinds of games, these big chip theory games where there's like two giant rule books, like a tome of all the rules and all the different stuff you have to remember, generally aren't my kind of game, but there's something about this one that I absolutely adore. This is one of the few games on the planet that I actually prefer to play solo so that I can just kind of get into the puzzle of how to solve these objectives and how to solve this problem of getting out of here and getting my objectives done. And I really enjoy doing that kind of on my own. No offense to Mike, who's my brother. That's why he's not presenting with me. This is Nick's time right here. And so I really, really enjoy it. It's just, it's fun to see how all the different robots work. They all honestly do feel quite different. I think a lot of chip theory games are games that you have to invest in. If you don't really invest in them, you're kind of not gonna live into their full potential. You kind of really have to dig in. And this is one for some reason, that I just love. I absolutely adore it. And I think a lot of it does have to do with the theme. I think the robot kind of uprising, the iRobot kind of thing is interesting. But the reason why I love this one is because it's not like a big shoot 'em up violent theme. When you think of a robot uprising, overthrowing your human overlords, you would think that'd be coming in guns a blazing, but this one's not, which I think is more realistic to how it would actually work is you have to do it through stealth and you have to do it through hiding and sabotaging and manipulating rather than coming in guns a blazing because this doesn't really work. And this game has just got so many different things going on. There's so much variety. There's so many different ways to play, so many different choices that it just, I just love it. I honestly can't really tell you why, except for the fact that for some reason, even though this is generally really, really not my kind of game, I usually play one game and go, hey, that was cool. I'm gonna go play something else now. And this one keeps calling to me. And so when I was thinking about what was my favorite game of the year, there's a lot of other games that if you know that my kind of taste in games, you would think maybe that would be it, but it's actually Burn Cycle, which is, really a big shock to me, which I actually think is really, really fun. So Burn Cycle is so much fun. If you like variety, if you like that kind of theme, if you like chip theory games in general, if you want a game that's very rules heavy, but once you kind of get through that rules, there's just so much to explore and there's so much to do and there's so much content to consume within it. I just think it's an absolute blast and I really love Burn Cycle. All right, so my favorite game of the year is Burn Cycle. It gets this wonderful, beautiful award because it's just, very, very cool. Honestly, that's the reason. It's just freaking cool. This is a game I literally cannot stop thinking about. Every time I have friends and family over, there's only one game in mind right now this entire year. That's part of my selection choice off of my shelf. There's a very, very small amount of them. And every single time, this is the one game that leaves an impact. My favorite game of the year is Wonderland's War. Now, Wonderland's War is a game published by Druid City Games and Skybound Tabletop. It is designed by Ben Eisner, Tim Eisner, Ian Moss, and Manny Tremblay. This game is all about chaos in Wonderland. I don't know if you're familiar with the Alice in Wonderland theme. I'm sure you are. Honestly, not my biggest favorite theme, I'll say that. But, however, this game surprised me by a freaking mile because it is so, so good. Here's what you're doing. On your turn, you're gonna be going around this magical tea party and collecting different cards. You collect four cards in total. What do those cards do, Tim, you're asking? Well, 
When you collect these cards, you are putting supporters in different regions around Wonderland. And when you do that, the whole point of that is to build up your entire army. Yes, I know, I'm excited too. Anyways, so when you're building up your entire army supporters, you're also collecting a bunch of other resources. You're building up your fun little bag. This bag, honestly, I thought it was gonna get repetitive so fast. I'm like, okay, you're drawing different chips from a bag. Come on, like if you do it over and over again, it's gonna get redundant. It's gonna get so boring, but Every single time I get so stoked drawing from here because you can build it out. You can have different amounts of resources and Wonderlandians who you collect here with these beautiful miniatures on the side. So you go around, you collect Wonderlandians, you collect resources, you're strengthening up your leader. There are five asymmetric factions. I can go on and on. Let me tell you exactly why it is my favorite, my top game, a number one game of the year. And that, is because it leaves an impact, like I said before. Every single time people come over, they get introduced to this game. They're a little bit um, overwhelmed by the mechanics a little bit, but honestly, it's super simple because you go around the tea party, peaceful tea party, you collect some cards, and once you collect those cards, bam, it goes into the war phase. And then during war phase, you start going along this battle track. And what's really cool is that you can choose to stop whenever you want. And you wanna do that because it's strategic. Right? When you stop on the forge track, you can build up different faction abilities. You unlock new abilities as you go. Everyone plays drastically different. And like I said, there are five different characters. There's so much variety in the gameplay and it is always different. The cards are different. The regions, the scoring victory points, the amount of victory points that you score in each region is different. And on top of all that, I think my favorite, my number one favorite aspect about this game is that it constantly escalates. It already starts off with a really fast pace, right? Go around, click cards. But then right after that, it just goes up all the way through. Because not only are people unlocking new abilities and introducing them into the game, but also it goes into round two cards and then round three cards and the cards get stronger and stronger. So your bag becomes a lot stronger, it becomes a lot more curated and it's just so immensely satisfying to play. Even when it's not my turn, I'm waiting for other people. What's really cool too is that you can bet and wager and that introduces a ton of really fun table talk. I wanna present my favorite game of the year to Wonderland's War for being literally the best board game I played this year. It's so good. If you haven't tried it, I don't understand why because it's ridiculously amazing and addicting to play. I guarantee you people are gonna talk about it once you introduce them to it one time through because it's so unique. It adds on to the bag building mechanic a ton. There's so much variety. And it's also like, come on, it's like super stunning to look at too on top of that. So. With that said, that's my favorite game of the year. Thank you to Drew City Games and Skybound Tabletop for introducing this beautiful piece of art to my family and friends because it is one heck of a game. I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who's watching this brand new award ceremony. I can't wait to see what games end up in next year's ceremony. I also wanna say thank you to my community. Streaming on Twitch, I've been able to meet a lot of new people who are now my friends. And I've also got to meet all of you. And now we get to do this award ceremony together. So thank you to everyone watching. Yeah, I wanna give a huge thank you to everyone who came out today. Some people flew from Canada. Everyone came from all over the place for this one filming event. It is wild to just hang out with all of you. Super cool. Also wanna give a huge thank you to my camera crew right behind the camera and my family and friends. Let's go. All of this would not have been possible without any of them. And also thank you to Rascals for partnering with us today for providing this beautiful super table that is amazing to film on. Um, could not have done this amazing epic award ceremony without that. And of course to the Wolfpack. Could have done it without y'all. Uh, thank you so much to my wife because uh, she's supported me throughout this whole journey. Um, and being able to be here is because of her being such a huge support to me and the channel. I um, also want to say a special thank you to basically everybody that ever comes and watches my videos. Strategy Guides is a weird thing. And so the <laughs> fact that you ever came and like looked up Strategy Guides for a board game, thank you so much for trying to get better at board games. And thank you so much, Tim, for having us all here as well. Yeah, it's man. been a blast. Of course. I'm so, so thankful. Oh, cool. I, yep. I also would like to say thank you. <laughs> 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 so thank you to, of course, Tim for having us, to everyone for watching, to, I guess, real, really, like, Tim, this idea is, like, wild, and to see it come together has been amazing. Thank you to everyone here who has welcomed us into a new country with open arms of the California sun. <laughs> I'm loving it. It's great. 
Um, but yeah, we had a great time and we're excited to hopefully do this again. Yeah, and just thank you to our community who continues to support us and, and engage with our videos and, and like and subscribe and all those awesome things. And yeah. to all our new friends that we've met, it's been an incredible journey. Yeah. And thank you for just being here with us for that. Yeah, later days. <laughs> Hey, hey, brothers. Hey. Brothers. <laughs> uh, we also just want to say thank you uh, to mostly to everyone here because yeah. I feel like there's a kind of a new wave of a lot of content creators, and I feel like this is a lot of the people who are really pushing the envelope of board games and board games content creation. And Tim, I feel like, is leading the way. And so uh, it's just really cool to see everyone come together. Thanks for everyone who watched us. I don't know why you do, but you should. Thanks for letting us just so. like ramble on about board games. I feel like that's what a lot of us do is just talk about things we're passionate about yeah. and like create crazy awards for them. And it's cool to have well, people we want to talk about them just as much as we do. So we're not unicorn yeah. people who are alone. Indeed. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Spin back. Spin back. Ooh, I like how it's so smooth. Smooth. It's always been smooth. 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 Hello. Hi. Thank you so much to everyone who has watched this video. Um, thank you for supporting high production, you know, videos like this. I think Tim is doing a really amazing job at sort of pioneering this new, I want to say, direction that video or board game content is headed in. And, you know, we really value your time. So thank you for watching. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll just keep it uh, short and brief. Monique and I are both very thankful uh, for our audiences and for everybody that's watching today. Also, thank you, Tim, for having us out here. Uh, it was really, really fun, and we hope to see you guys on the next video. Thank you. Just come in here. Um, I am pretty new to the board game content creation, and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to the board game community out there and the board game industry for welcoming me with open arms and for all of you guys for welcoming me. It's, it's been amazing. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Tim, thank you so much for inviting me, inviting us all here. It's been a fantastic experience. So can't wait for next year. Everybody? That's it. That's it. Um, so actually, it's not fully over yet. So, <laughs> so. Every single game that you saw featured here today is being given away on all of their channels. So um, if you like their games, if you love their, trust me, just visit their channel, leave a comment. That's all you have to do. Let me know why you love their channel so much because trust me, I am a huge fan of every single one of the channels. That's why I want to give away a game that's their favorite. It's going to be incredible. So make sure you leave a comment on their latest video, which will be linked down in the description below. For everybody here, support them. Trust me, they are some of the best content creators. They are the best in the industry, and you do not want to miss out on any of that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Surprise. <laughs>